In this question, we're asked, why does lithium have a higher first ionization energy than sodium? If you look at the periodic table, lithium is in box number three. That is, it has an atomic number of, uh, of three, which means that its electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1. By comparison, sodium has an electron configuration, uh, in a neutral state at least, of neon uh, followed by 3s1. In fact, if I write that whole thing out, I'm going to go ahead and do it the longhand way. We've got 1s2, 2s2, uh, 2, 2, sorry, 2p6, 3s1. When we talk about ionization or first ionization energies, that is the amount of energy required to uh, remove or tear away an electron from, a mol or from an atom. In the case of lithium, the electron that's being torn away in its first ionization is that one. That is an electron in a 2s orbital. By comparison, the first electron being removed from a sodium is in the 3s orbital. S orbitals, all s orbitals, 1s, 2s, 3s, it doesn't matter, all have the same shape. They're all spheres. So you can imagine lithium, if I were to draw this out, lithium has a nucleus, all represented by this dot. It has a, a 1s orbital, which is very, very small. And inside that 1s orbital, there are two electrons. Two electrons soaring around in there. It's 2s orbital, just like... This 1s orbital, just like a Russian nesting doll, is nested inside the 2s orbital. So this is like a big sphere. And the 2s orbital has a single electron in it. In the case of sodium, we've got the same kind of thing. We have its nucleus. It's got a 1s orbital that has two electrons in it. It has, and I probably should draw that to size, sorry. Try and make it match this one. So it's got a 1s orbital, which is small, two electrons. Nested within it is a 2s orbital which also has two electrons in the case of sodium soaring around in there. It has, of course, two p orbitals. Uh, and it's confusing when I say this. Every single set of p orbitals, there are actually three of them. One is, occupies the x orbital, one, or the x axis, one occupies the y axis, and one occupies the z axis. And it's kind of difficult to draw that three dimensionally, but I'm, I'm doing my best. And within those, there are six electrons. So I've got two in each of these individual lobes. One of these, once again, is occupying the x-axis, the other the z-axis, and the other the y-axis, all perpendicular. And then outside that, with all of this junk kind of nested within it, is a 3s orbital. And a 3s orbital is even larger. And it has a single electron in it. Okay, that's a lot more explanation than you probably want or need. Here's the, here's the, the point, I guess. Sodium's 3s orbital, or, or sorry, electron out in this 3s orbital is much farther away from the protons in the nucleus than the outermost electron in lithium. What that means is that because that electron is further away from those protons, it's easier to remove it than it is if you're closer. So lithium has a much higher first ionization energy because its single electron that you're going to remove is closer to those protons in the nucleus. That then takes us to the second question in, in this set, and that is what is the general relationship between size of an atom and its first ionization energy? Um, and here's the general relationship. As size gets bigger, first ionization energy <clears throat> goes down. So as you get an element that's larger and larger and larger, it's easier and easier to take that electron in the outermost orbital away because that electron is so much further from the nucleus that it doesn't feel it as much as an electron would if it were smaller and smaller and smaller. So larger the size, the lower the first ionization energy and vice versa. The last question in this set says, which element in the periodic table has the largest ionization energy and which one has the smallest? As we look at the periodic table, you'll notice going across row two that we have uh, lithium followed by uh, uh, boron and carbon, or sorry, it goes lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine right before you hit neon. I've taught you in the past that as you go from left to right across a, a row on the periodic table, you don't get any more orbitals. The only thing you get is one more proton in the nucleus going from one element to the next to the next in the row. Because you have one more proton, the size gets smaller as you get across a row. So fluorine is the element that has the most protons with the orbitals that are the closest and tightest to it. Therefore, the hardest element to remove a single electron from is going to be fluorine. Which element do you think would be the easiest to take away an electron from? It's going to be the least electronegative element on the periodic table, which is uh, francium, if you're looking at radioactive elements. But anyway, francium is in the bottom 
uh, left hand corner, if you're looking, yeah, bottom left hand corner of the periodic table, least electronegative. It's huge! It's outermost uh, electron, so francium, if you look at it, has uh, an electron configuration of, uh, of a radon, followed by, what, 7s1? <clears throat> the point is, this single electron is in a 7s orbital. Compared to a 1s or a 2s, a 7s is humongous. It's so far away, this electron, from the protons and the nucleus, that you can shave it off or take it away and it won't even feel it. So the, this is going to require a very, very small amount of energy. So once again, it asks which requires the largest ionization energy to remove that first electron is going to be fluorine. And the one that's going to require the smallest number uh, or amount of energy to remove an electron from is going to be francium.